Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Marketing 101. We got a great guest this week, Jessica Rhodes from Interview Connections. Thanks for being with us this week. Hey, Dr. D. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we crossed paths kind of organically about podcasting in the in the in the previous time. Mm -hmm. And here we are again doing a podcast together about podcasting, which is super cool. So if you're listening right now, it's going to be all about podcasting and why you may want to think about starting maybe your own or joining and collaborating on a podcast regularly for multiple reasons. So that's cool. How'd you get into all this? Where did you start? Where's your background? Tell us your story. Yeah. So I became an entrepreneur out of a desire to be a stay at home mom. So when I was pregnant with my first child in 2013, I called up my parents, my dad's an entrepreneur. And I said, I want to be home when the baby comes like, what, what should I do? And since my dad was already an entrepreneur, he had a newsletter marketing business. He's a business coach. He told me about being a virtual assistant. He said, you would have your own business, make your own hours and you're an entrepreneur. So you can make as much money as, as you're able to. And so he became my first client. Um, so that's how I got into business. One of the things that my dad asked me to do for him as a virtual assistant was to book him as a guest on podcasts. So this is in 2013. This is over a decade ago. So podcasting was not what it was, you know, what it is now, but podcast interviewing, podcast appearances, having his own podcast was such a great way for him to get visibility, to network, to find clients, to collaborate with other people without having to travel and to go to conferences and go, go to trade shows and, and do the whole song and dance of in-person work. And so I was booking him on podcasts. There were no other companies that were booking podcast interviews. At the time, PR firms were not placing their clients on podcasts because it was a very small medium at the time. And so I saw that there was this opportunity. My clients loved being a guest. They loved having their own show. Everyone that I was reaching out to was so joyful. They're like, yes, I want to do an interview. I want to have this guest on my show. And so I saw this opportunity to create an agency to get people booked for podcast interviews. So that's how Interview Connections got started. And we've grown tremendously, really riding the wave of podcasting as it's grown over the last you know, 10 to 11 years. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. So really an organic start for you that uh, has created a lot of opportunities. So uh, Jessica can play a critical role in when you get started and collaborating on other podcasts. I think that's the most difficult thing that uh, um, most podcasters get into is, okay, I started recording my my, vo my voice on a microphone. Now, what's next? Well, you want to be cooperating with other people to be on their shows as well to to build that web that we call search engine optimization. So that's really cool. What have you found have been the best startups, uh, best way to start up a podcast? What are some of your tips for people that maybe are like, hey, maybe I should give this a shot? Yeah, well, I mean, there's two ways, right, to get into podcasting. There's having your own podcast like you have, you know, hosting your own show, hosting solo based topics where you have a topic that your audience wants to learn about and you record yourself teaching that topic. So that's number one. There's having guests on your show featuring an expert and that's a great way to collaborate. And then there's also podcast appearances. A lot of people want to leverage the podcast medium, but they don't necessarily want to have their own show. So there's owned media, which is having your own show. And then there's earned media media, which is podcast appearances and going and being interviewed as a guest expert on other people's podcasts. So when somebody's interested in the podcast medium, I like to first talk about, well, what's the best way for you to leverage it? Do you want to host your own show or do you want to be a guest expert and go on other people's shows? And maybe it's both, but starting there to figure out what is most in alignment with how you like to market and, and what you want to commit to. That's kind of the first step. That's great. Yeah. Thinking about both ways uh, is really important as well. Is there one that's leveraged a little bit better? Is it better to own, to be a lot of owned media or is earned media better? I, in my opinion, equal power, but different there, right. you know, and ultimately I will say if you own your own media, you have your own podcast, you will also want to be a guest on other people's podcasts so that you can grow the audience. If you have your own show, but you are not also doing podcast appearances and marketing, unless you already have a massive following that's just going to start listening to your podcast, you will need to also be going out and marketing the show because you can have a podcast, but if nobody's listening, 
what's the point? <laughs> you know, you might like doing it, but you do want to have people listening, even if that's your client, you know, your patient base, your email list, your prospects and things like that. Um, so right. equal power, but different. And ultimately, if you have your own show, you'll probably also want to be a guest on other people's shows too. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. That's great. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, uh, search engine optimization and I've always thought about this and don't, I actually know how it works, but I think you might have greater insights on this. Yeah. When you do your podcast, how does it directly improve SEO or help with your search engine optimization? Yeah. So search engine optimization is super important for chiropractors and any local businesses because people are Googling for what you do. I was telling you before we started, when I was on vacation, I was in pain and I searched for a chiropractor. And so his SEO was really important because he came up first when I was searching for someone in the area that I was in. And search engine optimization, I know you just did an episode on it recently, so your listeners should check that out if they haven't already, but it's really, you know, having a lot of links back to your website online. The more websites that aren't yours that are linking back to your website, Google is going to notice that and make sure that you are coming up more often when people search for you or what you do or what you do in the area that you do it. So when you have your own podcast, that's good for your search engine optimization because now you have a lot of content that's being created on your website. You have your podcast, you have show notes and episode descriptions. So there's a lot of copy. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of um, audio for Google to take note of and say, oh, there's a lot of value on this website. And so when people are searching for you and what you do, if there's a lot to read and to listen to on your website, that's going to be good for your SEO. When you're doing podcast appearances and being on other people's shows, that's also good for your SEO because the host of the show will typically put a link back to your website in the episode description. So let's say you're on 30 to 40 podcasts in a year. So 30 to 40 podcast appearances, that's 30 to 40 backlinks to your website. And so over that time, people are searching for you and what you do. Let's say somebody says, oh, you should go check out Dr. D. He's the best chiropractor in town. Someone searches Dr. D. They see all his podcasts. So now they can go listen to all his podcasts, listen to all of his podcast appearances. He now comes up as an authority and as an expert, which drastically improves his positioning. And people trust experts. They trust experts so much more than just somebody that does something but they don't, they're not, there's no way for them to vet and see, is this person the right fit for me? Right. Love it. There you go. That's how it all works. You, uh, <laughs> you, I just keep banging the same drum. It's just nice for you to say it all. For once <laughs> exactly. About SEO <laughs> and how it all works. I mean, Google and everybody's reading this stuff all the time. So your transcripts are automatically written from your podcast, which is text, which Google bots can read. And now I think they go through audio too. They can scribe all audio as well. So Yep. It's pretty, it, it's a, uh, it's a pretty cool system there and why it's so important. So I think that's what my listeners would love to hear. I think you got their bells ringing right now, <laughs> but let's go into some other ways that podcast. So when you get started, we think about equipment cost, all those little things, uh, having a good mic and a good place to shoot audio is important. I think we're, we're past those points, but once you get onto the launching, what's the best platforms to use? What's the best media to use? Where do you get started? Where should you host? I mean, these are probably the questions going through the listeners' heads right now. It's like, well, what do I do? How do I do it? Yeah, absolutely. So I know that you're, you know, those listening to the show, you have a business, you're running a chiropractor practice, you're running a healthcare facility. I would not do this yourself. I would first find the per companies that can help take this off your plate. So there's excellent, like we could go through it all. Like Libsyn, for example, L-I-B-S-Y-N. That's where I would host the audio. I use the ATR 2100 microphone. Like we can go through that, but my best piece of advice to somebody that's already running a successful practice, a successful business is to, f it's, it's who, not how, and that's an excellent book. If you haven't read it, who, not how, who can do this for me? So there's excellent podcast production companies that will just take all of this off your plate and figure out where it gets produced, you know, where it gets hosted, how to get it out to all the different directories and platforms so that you can focus on the thing that you do best, which is educating and speaking and networking with guests and things like that. Um, so that's what I would recommend there is to line up the service providers that can help take this off your plate because ultimately you will commit and do podcasting so much longer, which is you get more out of it when you stick with it a long time. Love it. So delegate, delegate. Yes, your delegate. Out. Yeah, I love it. 
and then sure. um, you know connect with Jessica and she'll show you who and how and what to do that to get that all going. But first off, yeah, you don't have to. Do you have to record all your own podcasts, or can that be delegated as well? Yeah, the sky's the limit. So if you are the face of your company, of your practice, and you are the expert, I would encourage you to take the lead on it. But depending on how big your organization is, you know, you might have somebody in a marketing role that can actually do podcast interviews, like host the show and bring on guest experts. So there absolutely is the possibility and the room to expand and delegate even the hosting of the show. But if you feel drawn and you're growing to a point where you want to be in that thought leadership role, it's probably something that you'll want to host yourself. Good. I'm glad you touched on that. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, as, as the expert or as the person in your local community, you probably want to take this on yourself and be the face of the podcast and be the, the one doing all the talking. Cause then it just builds the credibility of, Oh, wow. He knows a little bit about sleep apnea. He knows a little bit about uh, indigestion. He knows a little bit about things I never thought a chiropractor could help with or whatever it is that you do. So that's how I've leveraged my other podcast, Living a Full Life Locally, is to just be that expert and do it each week on different topics. Uh, it's amazing how people are like, you're going to get burnt out or you won't run out of ideas. We're going on to two years, almost 100 episodes. I'm like, I don't even know how I came up with all this stuff. But it just, it just you know it, you talk about it, it can be fun. Um, I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, this one's just an organic one that's, you know, it helps when you have guests. I find that this one is just great to, to open up the marketing umbrella and get all the experts like yourself out here. It really helps not just my podcast, but it just helps the viewers and the listeners to be like, oh, wow, I learned something new from somebody smarter than Enrico because they now know me. They know he doesn't know all the all the answers. So it's great. Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's awesome. Yeah. And then what do you find are some of the trials and tribulations that you may run into trying to host a podcast. Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of touched on it coming up with ideas as one of the biggest trials that podcasters face. Like they come up with a lot of ideas to get started. And then once they go through their initial batch of, oh, these are the episodes I want to do. These are the topics I want to do episodes on. It's like hitting a creative wall I have found has been the biggest challenge in long term, any type of content creation, but especially podcasting. Um, so that's where guests come in very, very helpful. Um, they take a lot of that work off your plate because when you do a solo podcast and it's all you teaching, sometimes you get to the point where you're like, what else do I talk about? Um, so for that, guests are really helpful. And you can also do multiple episodes on the same topic. People need to hear certain things multiple different ways, multiple different times. Maybe you did a certain topic, you know, two years ago or a year ago, do it again. You probably have new insights or new ways to talk about it. So yeah, having that creative block and then sticking with it consistently long-term consistency and having the episodes come out on a regular day and time on a regular schedule is going to help engage the audience the most, but sometimes that can be a challenge of like, okay, I need enough episodes. So batching is really helpful. If you have four episodes that come out every month, record eight. That way you can always have episodes in the can, so to speak, that you can publish if you do run into a week where you're really busy, you weren't able to record any, any new episodes. That's smart. And do you leave the ones in the can just in case you get backed up or do you just auto schedule eight weeks in advance? Yeah, I would auto schedule eight weeks in advance. So they're okay. always coming they're always out. But yeah, but that way, just maybe you're eight weeks ahead of the game, maybe you're four weeks ahead of the game, but always having something. And then, you know, growing the audience. That's probably the biggest thing that people str struggle with is how do I grow an audience? They've started a podcast, but they're like, I only have 50 people listening, or I only have 100 people listening. And so right. we could talk a little bit about stats because a lot of people have no idea what's good, what's bad, what should I be aiming for? Because the downloads of a podcast are not public. There's no way to know exactly like how many downloads that different podcasts have. A top 10% show has about Oh gosh, like I think 400 listeners. Um, so if you're in, if you have several hundred listeners, you're doing better than the vast majority of podcasts out there. And it is all about quality. Um, most podcasts hosted by experts, by business owners that are doing a very specific topic, they're not going to be reaching the masses. Like the most popular shows with 50,000, 100,000 millions of listeners, they're entertainment shows, they're comedy shows, they're news shows, they're podcasts that are designed 
for the majority of America <laughs> or the majority of the world general interest podcast. But when you're narrowing down into these very niche topics, which most of us have very niche topics because we're subject matter experts, you do you will likely have a smaller audience than kind of the general comedy true crime news type of podcast. Right. That makes sense. And um, so we talked about content and then you, you brought up something great and I lost the question. It was about creating the content consistently and being on top of it, but not having writer's block Yeah, and uh, being ahead of the game as well. So by having people on there can really help that process uh, with keeping your podcast going and staying ahead. I think that it was staying ahead. I read something. Most people give up on the podcast within eight episodes. So I'm glad you said eight. I think that's the magic number. So before you even launch your podcast, shoot 10 episodes and, and you automatically win the podcast mm -hmm. game because you won't quit. You'll be 10 weeks ahead and you can always just create podcasts and it doesn't have to be weekly. What does it have to be? It doesn't have to be daily. It doesn't have to be weekly. Your podcast can drop at any frequency but is it true that keeping the same frequency consistent is the most important thing? It does help a lot because then people have you as a part of their regular schedule. I remember a couple of years ago, I was doing like a weekly live show in my Facebook group. And one week I skipped it and someone got so upset. They were like, I was planning to be there. And it's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize somebody was planning to be there that day. But, you know, so you don't realize how many people actually do count on those weekly episodes. So it doesn't have to be weekly. It can be monthly. It's whatever you want. I always say there's really no rules in podcasting. There's best practices and things that work well. Uh, but ultimately, you want to find the strategies, the schedule, the consistency, the topics that work best for you, because it's when it's all in alignment with your interests and your what you're excited to talk about, people will enjoy listening to that. Great marketing your podcast that's what you brought up marketing yes. it itself that is a unique thing that i must say i've struggled with and two really don't know where to go when it comes to marketing the podcast i mean social media is a great way to kind of blast it and post it mm -hmm. but what have you found successful for marketing so once you get your show up and running what's the best way to market it so i mean the best way, to, there's a couple different strategies that I'll share with you and your audience. So, I mean, number one, being, uh, you know, podcast appearances are really great because when you're on other people's podcasts, their audience are already people that listen to podcasts. So that's a great way to promote your show is to go be a guest on other people's podcasts. Um, using your podcast interviews in your sales and marketing funnel is perfect. I know your most recent episode as of this recording is about follow-ups. And so when you set up your follow-up sequence, include links to your podcast. Say, hey, you know, following up, thought you might enjoy this episode that I did about XYZ. And so I do that when someone schedules a sales call with me, I'll ask them to listen to my podcast appearance on the Mindset Answer Man, for example. And that's a way for them to get to know the strategy, learn a little bit about the strategy, what we do. Um, so leveraging your podcast interviews, your podcast episodes, your podcast appearances in your sales and marketing is great. Sending them to clients, um, to patients, you know, sending them to the people that are already in your following because podcasting is a great way to grow your audience to generate new leads. But it's like that always be closing mentality, even after somebody has already become your patient, become your client, you still want to be kind of selling to them, you still want to be re enrolling them and re motivating them into sticking with you. So leveraging your podcasts with both, you know, your current customers, patients and clients, the people who are on your email list, um, and then the new people that are just starting to follow you on social media. So just kind of use it everywhere. Love it. That is great. Um, and then where do you keep a lot of your podcasts? Do you find that you having a YouTube channel works well or where, where do you think you're hosting it would be the best? Yeah. So YouTube is becoming really popular. I would definitely host it on a platform like Libsyn or something that will automatically distribute it out to Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Apple and Spotify are kind of 50 50 is in terms of where people listen. Like I listen to all my podcasts and music on Spotify, but a lot of people listen to their podcasts on Apple Podcasts. And then there's a variety of other players. So you definitely want to have an RSS feed so that people can find your podcast in all of the different podcast platforms and also put it on YouTube. If you are doing a video podcast, you're recording the video, put it on your YouTube channel because 
Google owns YouTube. So just back to that SEO conversation. If you get your podcast up on YouTube, that is going to help your SEO as well. Make sure you're optimizing the YouTube video descriptions with tags and keywords and a good description with links, good title. Um, that's going to help you immensely with your platform online. Perfect. You pretty much wrapped up the whole circle there about SEO and coming right back to it. These are all the things we talk about all the time. So it's just nice that the industry is saying all this and I'm not just making this stuff up. It is the the golden rules to uh, backlinking and SEO and growth and, and just being aware of, and making other people aware of the things that you do. So if you're going to do a podcast, yeah, you want some listeners, right? You don't want it going out into space with nobody there. So that's great. Check out interviewconnections.com. She's got a bunch of great information there and follow Jessica online at her connections at, at, at interview connections on Facebook, Instagram, all those good links. You can find her there, ask her questions directly. She's always a, a plethora of knowledge for, for all this stuff, podcasting. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Anything else you want to drop before any any tips or did I miss anything? I No, I think this was perfect. We talked about podcast hosting, appearances, the SEO, which is my favorite. That's a little known benefit. So I'm so glad that SEO got a lot of airtime today. Yeah, no, it's great. I think it's really important. But thank you for your time. We'll catch you on the other side.